It takes much effort to get up here, amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ooh, glory. Lift your hands if you will. That is my custom. We want to worship God. So Pastor, I thought we just worshiped. We did. We're going to another level now. Amen. We have to prepare ourselves. You can't just put seed in the ground. You got to till the ground. You got to prep the ground. You got to prepare the ground. Amen. When the word comes, it's like seed. And it makes a difference what type of ground it falls on. Amen. How many of you want a harvest? When you can't get a harvest to the ground in field, you can't get a harvest till there's been preparation made. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's why we worship and that's why we present ourselves before the Father. That's why we say, speak, Lord, your servants. Your servants are listening. God, don't tell me just what I want to hear, but tell me what I need to hear. Tell me what's going to produce life in this season. What's going to position me strategically where I need to be. And my commitment is to give you glory, praise, and honor. about you being a way maker, a miracle worker. God, whatever your people are standing in need of, make the way possible. Make the way plain. Do what you got to do. And again, our covenant commitment to give you praise and glory and honor. I mean, you believe today he is yet a miracle worker. Amen. A promise keeper. Anybody got some promises they had in on today? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, you can be seated, Ms. Ron. Good to see all of you present this morning. I want to invite you back to the book of Ecclesiastes, third chapter. Ecclesiastes 3. I began a new series last week, and it's called Shifting into a what? New season. A new season when God is doing something different in your life. Amen? A lot of times God is doing things that we ain't prepared for what he's doing. So I want to invite you back to Ecclesiastes 3, and we'll go from there. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 says, to everything there's a what? A season. And a time to what? Every purpose under the heaven. And he goes on to say a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant. And he keeps going into everything has a time to it. Everything has a schedule that it has to follow. Amen. Now, first point, it ain't your schedule. It's God's schedule. And many times we miss the new season of God or the thing God is doing because we ain't got on his timetable. We still want to do what we want to do the way we want to do it and not even realize that God said, I ain't even doing that no more. Huh? I'm doing a new thing. The Bible says, behold, I do a new thing. Shall you not what? Know it. The problem is you don't know God has shifted. So you stuck like Chuck. You still twinning your fingers where you used to be. And God says, I'm not there anymore. Amen. So I gave you a few pointers last week. I'll go over those one more time. Number one was that when God is shifting you into a new season, it's important to know that it's his will. Many times we don't know what God wills because we still want what we want. The Bible said there's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is what? Death. 
We also call it in the world of addiction and compulsion, it's insanity. Why do you keep doing the same thing over and over again, thinking something new is going to happen? Amen. You have to change. It doesn't have to change. Amen. We look at the second point, but well, stop focusing on your past. Many people can't shift with God because they're too busy looking at yesterday. Come on, come on. Uh, back down memory lane. Y'all remember that? Y'all don't know them about that. Y'all don't know them. Y'all don't play safe. Y'all don't know them about that. Huh? Back down memory lane. No, 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 no. I ain't got to go back when I'm trying to go forward. It's called forward momentum. Huh? Be mindful of everybody that want to take you back to your yesterday. You remember when we? Yeah, I remember. I remember some stuff you don't even know. Because the whole way they told. But it ain't about what was, it's about what is. What is God doing with me now? This is a now season. And some people can't get to their now because they never left their yesterday. Third thing was, learn how to focus on your future. Look ahead. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author of and the finishes. See, if you don't keep looking, you ain't gonna finish. Right. Remember when Peter said, Lord, Peter didn't come, he stepped out of the water. Man, he's moving into his future. But the Bible said, when he took his eyes off Jesus, he sank. See, because if you don't keep your eye on Jesus, you will sink. You will fall. If you don't keep your eye on the prize, if you don't keep your eye on destiny, you can be easily derailed or distracted. Then what? Whose fault is that? I told you I love what Paul said. I'm on a good fight. I kept the faith. I finished the course. I knew it was a course in front of me. But there's no prize to the one that doesn't finish. You got to finish. Amen? And also news is Jesus is here to help you finish. The fourth thing I told you is to expose yourself so you can build yourself. Mm -hmm. Expose yourself so you can build yourself. You ought to have, you ought to be the first one to have you under the microscope. Don't let everybody else tell you what's wrong with you and you don't know. Y'all don't want to work with that. Huh? See, why is it you see everybody else fall and don't see your own? Why you see everybody else shortcomings and don't see your own? Why you see everybody else's mistake but you can't see your own? Expose yourself. To what? Build yourself. What does he say? Let the weak say, I'm strong. Why? Because what the Lord did. But you got to first admit you. See, pride won't let you admit where you are. Pride will tell you you don't need no help. The fool has sin in his heart. There's no God. I don't need no help. I don't need nobody. Well, that's a lot we all need. Yes. Amen? Right. Be real. If with no one else, be real with yourself. Right. We talked about the fifth thing was mentorship. Get with somebody that's been where you're trying to go. Hmm? Misery love. You got to stop hanging out with folks that ain't going nowhere. Right. Don't want nothing. Right. And then don't want you to have nothing. Right. Amen? Jealous cause of what you got. Jealous cause you got a dream and a vision and a purpose. Glory to God. Six was ex execution of goals. You got to execute. You can't just talk about it. You got to be about it. Huh? And what does that mean? Sometimes I can't do what I want to do because I've got an assignment. I've got a goal and a death, and I got an issue. Ain't that gonna just fall out the sky and happen to you? Some things you got to make happen. Some things you got to put an effort in, an energy in. Glory to God. So execute your goals, and then help others get to where. When you get there, help somebody else. See, that's a problem in our community. We don't reach back and pull up. We step on to get to. Error. We don't step on. We create steps so others can get there. 
others can make it. Amen? So if you didn't get those last week, hopefully you got them now, you write them down. Amen? So let me get into this today's part. So when we talk about shifting, to, to have a spiritual shift is it's about the quality and state of your being. God is trying to change you. The whole essence of shifting is changing. But how do you know? If you don't seek to change, you don't get better. God didn't save you to stay the same. He saved you and brought you out of darkness into what? The marvelous light. So that meant you couldn't see where you was going. But now he says that I brought you into the light. Now you can see. Amen. Sight is important. I'll get into that in a minute. That if we're going to really shift and see, you got to have vision to shift. Right. It's hard to shift in the dark. What's another word for dark? Ignorance. My people are destroyed for a. It's what you don't know. And with today's internet highway freeway, it's just not that easy to be ignorant. Because knowledge is everywhere. But if you're lazy about learning, if you're lazy about growing, shifts will happen and you won't even know it. Times will change and you won't even know it. Because in Ecclesiastes 3, one, he says three different things. He said, you got to understand season, but you got to also understand time. But within season and time, there's always a purpose to what God is doing. Right. I got to know the heart of God. God, why are you moving like this in this season? Because what he is willing has to be greater than what I'm willing. Is it making, make, is it making sense? So when we talk about season, we're talking about the changing stages of our life and how we see it and how we view it. I told you about the essence of a, a magnifying glass. If I put a magnifying glass over the scripture right now, the scripture is not going to change. The only thing that's going to change is my perspective of what I see. And many times in God, he's changing our perspective and we don't recognize it. And we're missing it. He says, that's why I said magnify. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name well together. My relationship with God should be stronger today than it was 40 years ago. Right. Or 20 or 10, whatever you may be. In essence, there should always be progressive growth. You should be growing. You should right now, as we're approaching this end of, of 2024, according to the Gregorian account, you should be able to look back over your life and see how you've grown. How you have matured. Right. The Bible talks about a perfected peace, a perfected love. In essence, you ought to be growing in these things. You ought to be growing in your relationship with God. You ought to be growing in your relationship with others. Anything that don't grow, that don't produce, get rid of it. What did Jesus tell the fig tree? You ain't doing what you're supposed to do. You're gone. Huh? You got to learn how to put an expiration and an exit on what ain't producing. Whew. So what is time? Time is, time is how we measure where we are in this season. What do I need time for measure? Time is two. There are two types of time. There's chronological time, which is the clock. And then there's what is called Kairos time. What is Kairos? It's opportunities. Opportunities that, watch this, God presents you. Now, I've told y'all on this on several occasions. See, what happens with saints is saints don't realize God operates in time. Every three to seven years, he's doing something different. The problem is, when you miss what God is doing, you got to wait at least seven years for it to come back around. Because there are windows, there are portals, there are open, there are strategic and divine moments when God says, this is what I'm doing. But if you sit there questioning everything that's happening in your life, you will miss God moving in your life. Or if you're sitting there paying too much attention to the clock, 
The clock has nothing to do with God's opportunity. The clock can say it ain't time yet. But God said, this is something supernatural I'm doing for you right now because I want to. Ooh, I want to show up right now. I want to turn the tide. I want to change the circumstance. And I ain't limited to the clock. Mm -hmm. I ain't limited to the, to the clock. So when we deal with the purpose of what we're looking at is the, is the spiritual constructs, God said, these are, these are the implementations I'm making right now. So the Bible said, think it's not strange. Many times we miss the shield because to us it's strange. God, I can't believe you're doing it. But what you ask him to do? Huh? We ask God to do things and then we get, oh wow. Well, you know what that tells me? You didn't have true expectations. Scripture says my expectation is from the Lord. Don't be like the disciples when Peter was locked up, going home, call a prayer meeting, and then Peter shows up and knock on the door, and the first thing out of their mouth was, it must be a ghost. Well, really, you were praying for him to die. You expected a ghost. What happened to the man? I thought you were praying for the man to get out. He shows up, and it's got to be his ghost. Say something else. That means you don't let everybody pray for you. Because you might be praying my death when I'm trying to leave. Don't tell everybody your need. Hmm? Okay, y'all, that's what you mean. Go with me today to Daniel 2. Daniel 2. Help me with something. Tell me, oh God. Daniel 2. So it's imperative that we understand what God is doing in the season in which he's doing. It's imperative that we are conscious of where we are in God. Everybody there, Daniel's second chapter. I want to pick this up in verse 21. Then I better pick it up in 16. Daniel 2, verse 16. It says, Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to the house and made the thing known to Hanai, Michelle, and Azira, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the Lord, of the God of heaven, concerning the secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. The story is, the backdrop is the king had a dream, and he expected all of those that were around him to tell him because he forgot the dream. And he put a hit or a death sentence on them if they could not tell him what the dream was. So the word gets to Daniel of the king's desire. That's the backdrop. 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. Underline that. Wisdom and might are his. Why is that important in a season when God is shifting? Because don't nobody know what's going on but God. You talking to everybody else and ain't talking to God. See, that's what happened here. Daniel said, before I talk to anybody, I'm going to talk to God. Why? Because wisdom, the divine insight, and the strategy or the purpose behind what was shown, only God knows. Now let me regress for a minute. How many things you trying to do right now and ain't even talking to God about? It? How many things you trying to make happen and have not counted a cause? The Bible says, when men go up to start a war, go and build a house, and don't sit down first and count the cost. Look what he goes on to say. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he, 
He would. Come on, read your text. Mm. So, your time and your season ain't even in your hands. It's in God's hands. So one of the things I got into last week, one of the things that would help you understand season is understand who's the source of it. Mm -hmm. You can consult the astrologer and the witch doctor and anybody else you want to consult. It ain't going to help you none. You better have a conversation with God. Who is, watch this, the author and finisher of your faith. Look what he goes on to say. He says, he changes the times and the season. He changes. Now, we know that there are differences of seasons, spring, summer, winter, fall. Certain things happen in certain seasons. But guess what? God says, I can change your season. Huh? You may be going through this, this, or that right now. But God says, well, I get through. Hmm? It can change. How many know with God, things change at the voice of his word? All he has to do is speak. And things begin to happen. So look what he showed you. Let me show it to you from the book. And he changes the times and seasons. Look what also happens. He removed kings, but he also set up. Hmm? He changes authority. We call it in the kingdom the changing of the gods. There was a voice you were hearing. Now he said, there's another prominent voice in the land. There was one supervisor. Now there's another supervisor. He put him up. Well, remember what the scripture says in Psalms? That uh, the uh, promotion coming back from the what? North, south, east, and west. It's God that put him up, and it's God that bring him down. Your promotion ain't even tied to you. Y'all don't like it like this. Your next level ain't even tied to you. Y'all get to that? I'm going to help you now. Because see, some of you ready to be elevated. You're ready to go up. But how do you know? While you trying to impress men, you better be impressing God. Because that boss you smiling in the face of ain't the one. It's going to take God. You see what I'm showing you in this book? He changes the times and seasons. He removing kings and setting for kings. He giving wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Bible said wisdom is the principal thing, but in all you'll get is get what? Understand. Understand how God moves. Understand that God moves on the authority of his own word. That's when crying don't move God. Your acting out ain't gonna move God. God says, I'm gonna do what's in accordance with the will and purpose that I have planned. For you. Remember what Galatians says, oh foolish Galatians, who have been with you? How is it you start with God now? You're running on your own strength. Mm -hmm. You're running your own campaign. You got your own sight. God said, no, 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 no. It's got to be me. Huh? Because I can make you the head and above and listen. And it ain't got nothing to do with education. It ain't got nothing to do with pedigree. Who do you know? Right. Except knowing me. Huh? Because I will put up and I will pull down. I will give the wisdom and the strategy. Watch this, this y'all. This is good stuff. 22. He revealed the deep and the secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light. Y'all ain't talking yet. See, everything they going against you to keep you out and to keep you from, God says, I know. Right. I know where they at. I know their next plot, their right. next strategy. Right. I know. Watch this. Watch this. Can you help this? Can you, can you handle this? I know the next lie they're going to tell you. I know the next rumor they're going to start. Because hmm? ain't nothing they doing in secret to me. You may not know, but I know. And then the Holy Spirit in John 16 said, and he will reveal 
into you. See, I teach all this all the time. Sometimes you just got to ask God, God, reveal and expose. Right. Just in case I got some new enemies in this field, what are you going to point them out? Now, just because they three points them out don't mean I got to tell them. I just love the hell out of them. Because hmm? I can't overcome one spirit unless I use the opposite spirit. Hmm? But the fact is, I know you're an enemy. I know you're a demon and a devil sent from hell and you're on an assignment, but I ain't going to give you what you want. Y'all working with this? He revealeth the deep and the secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and what is in the what? In the light. Amen. Go to Deuteronomy 29. not go into 2024 looking unto you but looking unto him. Amen? You need to position yourself to win. Amen? But you win with him. You win with his word. Amen? You're in Deuteronomy 29, 29. Look at this right here. Somebody read this. So I want you to get it. Isn't that amazing? Huh? Didn't you see that? The secret things belong to God. But God says, when I reveal them to you, they're yours now. Huh? That's why God is, God is exposing something. Huh? Because God says, I don't want you to be ignorant of what they're doing. I don't want you to be ignorant of what I'm doing. Because guess what? You can only own what's revealed. Saints have missed this for many years. It's the revelation. Right. Hmm? It's the revelation. You gotta ask yourself, God, what are you revealing? What are you showing? Okay, let me let me let me drop that for a minute. God, why am I having this type of dream? Why has this occurred? Maybe God is showing you something. Right. Well, that old folk, they old song, they say, God is trying to tell you something. Huh? The question ain't if God is speaking. The question is, are you listening? Mm -hmm. God says sometimes because you're so busy, I got to get you in a dream and a trance and a vision to speak to you and give you instructions. Sometimes I got to put the Job said, I got to put you on a sick bed to talk to you because you're so busy. Tell your name to stop being so important to yourself. And learn what it is to be important to God. Learn what it is to be a vessel of honor and a vessel of gold to God. So God can use you. He said the secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed. Tell your neighbor, take ownership. Hmm? See? See, y'all ain't told me yet. When I get with God and God tells me who I am, it don't matter what nobody says. Huh? It don't matter what nobody says. It don't matter what the past was. It don't matter what, what happened over yonder. What is God doing? Huh? You see that? He said, reveal belong unto us and watch this. To our children. Notice your children don't get revelation till you do. Yeah. Now y'all miss that. So when we talk about generation curses, things that are passed down, the action took place with a father or a mother, patriarch or matriarch. Most times the child doesn't even know it. The child don't even see the pattern of it. Everybody dying at 45. Everybody catch cancer. Everybody has a wreck. Whatever. Okay, that thing needs to be revealed right. so it can be broken. Right. 
Huh? Christ has redeemed us from the curse. But if you don't know you've been redeemed, hmm? don't nobody in the family get married. Everybody's single and got 20 children. <laughs> they ain't got no hood. Come on, y'all. Y'all laugh. That's a fact. It was amazing. I worked the Kingston Project for many years. And every house we went to, that's my mama, that's my aunt, that's my sister over there. Oh, y'all yeah, yeah. I see this. Now I know what we need to do. We need to break this curse. We need to cancel this generational effect. Because what happened to Big Mama happened to Little Mama and on down the line. Somebody had to tell them the curse is broken. Somebody had to tell them this is it. God has made a way. Huh? Everybody ain't got to die from alcoholism. Everybody ain't got to die from gunshots. You got to learn how to see a pattern, recognize it, and say, God, where is the root of this? Because right. right. unless the axe is laid to the, the stump will grow again. Right. And God said, that's the things I'm trying to eradicate so you don't have to deal with it. Right. And your children won't have to deal with it. But until somebody rise up in God and said, teach me, show me, God help me. I know you got more for me than this. Glory to God. So the secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things we reveal belong unto us and our children forever, that we may all do the what? Work. God said, they will have to know so you can do. Don't go with me to um, Isaiah. 45. Isaiah 45. Verse 1. It says, Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two lead gates and the gate shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in some of the bars of iron. And I will give thee what? Mm. Isn't that amazing? God says, I know where the treasure is. Huh? He's telling Cyrus, Cyrus, watch this. You're going to be successful because you trust me. You're going to be successful because you have knowledge of me. You are in relation with me. You're going to be successful because you inquire of me. I'm going to make sure the way is open for you. Crooked places are going to be made straight. Rough places are going to be made smooth. Watch this, watch this. And then what 3 says, and I will give thee the desires, the I mean the treasures of darkness, and hidden riches of what? I mean, you all want a relationship with God just for that verse right there, but I go a little further. Because it ain't all about religions. Right. It's the relationship. Right. Huh? Did you catch that? Man, when you get in a relationship with God, who knows everything. Come on now, let you cover it up, show that. Right. You're not. You can't. You always winning with God. Right. Nobody goes on to say, and I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of the secret place, that thou may knowest that I, the Lord thy God, which call me by thy name, am the God of Israel. I'm your God. I'm your source. Your source. Everything you need is in me. Everything you're going to ever need is in me. 
Peter, he says, Behold, I give you everything that pertains to life and godliness. But do you know it? But do you know it? So different from last week, I want to go this route today. What's it going to take for you to, 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 what do you need to be successful in a shifting season? Write these down. The number one thing you need is to see differently. You need vision. You got to have a vision. Anything God calls you into, he has a vision for it. Now, we always said my vision, but the truth is it ain't my vision God gave it. Hmm? The only reason, watch this, Joy, the only reason I see it is because God showed it to me. Huh? Okay, let me stop that quick. So, have you realized that there were things you did 10 years ago that don't even interest you now? Why? Season change. Your perspective of it changed. Five years ago, there were certain things you just had to have, and now you don't care nothing about it. Why? The vision changed. God revealed or God exposed. And it was no longer a necessity. That's why Paul said, when I was a child, I acted like a child. But then I grew up and I realized I don't feel like playing now. Too old to play. You follow me? That season of life when you just didn't care, you just didn't give a you know what. <laughs> but now, you're more sensitive than ever. Season change. You become more mature, you got a more caring heart. There was a season of life, you just didn't care. But now everything matters. The vision has changed. So you need to see differently, you need to have clarity or vision. Then what else happens when God is changing? See, your emotions change. You don't feel the same about certain things. Certain things used to be certain things happened on the news, you didn't care. It happened on the news now, it bothers you. It happens on the news now, watch this, and you feel their pain. Sometimes it don't, we don't feel it until it happened to us. But that's a shift too. Mm -hmm. That's a shift. It's no different than the Good Samaritan when everybody was walking by except the one. There are seasons of your life you just walk by stuff. But then there are changes and then there's a season where you start to be more mindful. You start to say, this could be me. This could be mine. Amen. And I started to realize that things are changing. The third thing is that you have a heightened sense of hearing or awareness. Conversations matter. Words matter. I can't let you just speak anything and everything in my mess. Right. Mm, certain things I don't need to hear, don't want to hear. Amen. Certain conversations I don't want to be in. I'm mindful of what goes in my spirit. Hmm? Certain things you got to turn a deaf ear to. Why? It ain't taking you nowhere. Right. It's just gossip. Hmm? Be mindful now, folks. Just want to sit there and talk about folks all the time. <laughs> well, let me help you with something. Y'all, y'all, y'all old enough to know that you might not know. Uh, after they get through telling you about them, they're on the next line talking about you. Mm -hmm. And why you say, what the old saying, Grandma Lady used to say, if a dog will bring a ball, they'll take one back to you now. Mm -hmm. You're the next topic of conversation. But guess what? You ain't got to worry about it if you ain't saying nothing. If you don't go tell them anything, yeah, you know they're talking about Jesus. And <laughs> they ain't going to want to have that conversation too long. No, I don't want that done. You need to talk about Jesus. That's what you want to know. Next thing, so your that one was awareness. Next thing is 
things don't smell right. Right. Your sense of smell changes. And what that is is called judgment. The Bible says learn how to judge yourself. You know it don't smell right. Don't fool you. Judge that thing and move. Get out of it. It is what it is. And that's why you smell it as you do. Some things are a stench in the nostril of God. Right. And if it smells in the nostril of God, it ought to smell you. Now I have to be out there, they're gonna put it out. When you comfortable with that, I got to look at you in a different way. <laughs> huh? Come on now. Because if you can just sit there in it and endure it and it don't bother you, your sense of judgment is off. And last but not least, when you don't have a taste for a certain thing, this, that particular answer is belonging. You ever just been in a place where you know, I just don't belong here. This is not my place. Mm -hmm. I can't, I, I, I can't be comfortable. I'm not comfortable sitting here. Right. Psalms 1 talks about that. Sitting in the seat of the scornful. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's because you doing that right. don't mean I want to. Right. Mm -hmm. I have a little more respect for myself. Right. I can't stand. Got to move. Mm -hmm. Y'all heard that new song? That way they do song. Can't stay too long. They don't know that about that, John. See, I don't got up today. They don't know about that. Eric, you know about that. Eric, you lost too. Lord Jesus, what are we going to do now? Huh? Listen, he said, I can't stay too long. I used to hang out in the club every night. Okay, now you give me that mic. Long Michael was that It is not old as new. Y'all just ain't up this. Sean, help me out. King George. See, 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 Sean, they want to sit here and pretend with me like they ain't listening. Can't be Sean. 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 Can't be Sean.